Hello, this is Mark Boyer. This is a short informative video to sum up uh, the two larger videos called Part 1 and Part 2 of UCC history and how it affects and leads to this public trust challenge done by the OPPT to the UCC. Uh, I highly encourage people to go view uh, the first two videos. Uh, they're about 25 minutes each. Uh, and they're packed with information. And this is going to try to sum up what's happening there. Okay. And as to the title of the video, it's expressing that the UCC challenge is the apocalypse. And that's a loaded question and it's a loaded answer. And it really requires some definitions. Okay. And I'll point out that Apocalypse in has many meanings. To Bible thumping crypt, Christ, uh, Christians, it means fire and brimstone because nobody repents. That's what Revelation says. Okay, but apocalypse, even in Revelations, is a fundamental hidden truth that's revealed during a time of universal deceit. Now, that's what the definition of the word is. Now, what can I say? I'm saying that my message that I find in the UCC Public Trust Challenge is a hidden truth in a time of universal deceit. And for that, uh, I will point... Basically, okay, my basic assumption there is that the... Uh, Oath to the bar needs to be changed, and everything will change, okay? Uh, the bar, since the inception of the UCC, has been serving the sovereign's interest. Uh, within a generation after that, the Knights Templars were slaughtered across a whole generation in Europe because they refused to serve the sovereign's interest. and. The Masons succeeded in 1776 to change the trust from serving the sovereign's interest, which is a uh, noble term, to it being a banking term. And uh, what can I say? It took 250 years to totally abuse that to the point where uh, something greater than Solomon is here. Dead things rule the world. Corporations are dead things, and they are merchants of death. That's all they do. They destroy the earth because everything that's left is worth more. It, 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 what can I say? It's actually the fulfilling of a curse given in Abraham. You know, and I'm sorry, in Adam. Uh, Genesis 4 and 3. Okay? Actually, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because that's when Noah came around. Okay, but that's another story. You know, uh, basically, uh, sir, for the people, for the lawyers to walk into a room and change the oath to serving the Creator, which is the UCC public trust, would mean the change of everything. It really would. It would change, and it really is a message in a time of truth, in a time of universal deceit. And to point out the impact of that, okay, I'm saying that they're serving money right now. The sovereign's interest is the Ponzi scheme called the fractional reserve system that's driven down by absolute demonic despots onto the world to fulfill every dark curse in the Bible. Okay? I think that's well understood. Uh, I don't think that's a secret. That's not a secret. Okay? But the universal deceit that's been rammed on our throats for the last 700 years is that serving the sovereign's interest is a noble intent. It's not. It's pure evil. Okay? And serving the Creator is the natural progression from this. 
Okay? And in reality, if they reject it, uh, shit's going to hit the fan. And if they accept it, it really is the key to paradise on Earth. And basically, uh, the UCC challenge is an offer to fix everything. Okay? There, I'm not saying that's the only offer on the table. I'm saying that all the other offers that people have been making, like uh, Kevin Manette and his, uh, his public trust against the Pope and the Queen and the Canadian government, uh, it will never happen until lawyers walk into a room and change their oath to ser from serving the sovereign's interest to serving the creator. Period. And they can't act because they're all sworn to serve the Ponzi scheme. And uh, what Kevin Annette is attacking is one branch of the Ponzi scheme. And there are lots of people attacking different branches of the Ponzi scheme. And I, I, no, cooties to them. I'm not saying any of them are wrong. You know, you're, you're fighting the, the big ugly beast. But, you know, Heather really has nailed it, you know, a solid nail on biblical prophecy. So hats off to Heather and the people and the people of their generation who stand up in indignation to the wrong, you know, to this generation. Which is paraphrasing uh, Luke 11, which is a good story. Okay, it's the, it's the recipe for paradise on earth. How to get there without a bloodbath. Okay, and everybody knows everything in Revelations has to happen. Therefore, Jesus Christ died for nothing. Okay, seriously. If everything in Revelations has to happen, then Jesus Christ died for nothing. But you know what? All these Bible thumpers are convinced that it has to happen that way. Jesus Christ died for nothing. Okay? End of story. And it has to start from the law. The law is supreme. Period. So says the constitutions of everybody. Until they reverted back to the archetypal form of King Henry VIII here in Canada. And that happened with the, inst the instituting of NAFTA. Okay, and they must repent for the teachings of Solomon that created this mess where dead things rule the world. And we're all slaves. Paper slaves to a debt that's impossible to pay. Now, the magnitude of the people's public trust to serve the Creator is flat out mentioned in Luke 11. Which is all about good first fruit, and I'll say it. And it says there, any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and the house divided itself will fall. That's exactly what hold, upholding the Creator will do to society. That's its impact that it'll have. Okay? Everything changes. Shortly after doing the changing of the oath, they'll have to come out, create a case file that redeems all debt in the world. All debt in the world would be paid. That's every bank loan, that every municipality, every city, every country, every government, every credit card, every house loan, every will have to be forgotten. Okay? And they'll have to say, well, the, the dollars in your pocket are still worth something. Uh, you're, well, it's not the collapse of everything. It's uh, none of this debt was printed. It can never be printed because we can never create that kind of money without giving 90% of the profit to the people who are running the Ponzi scheme. That's just the way it is. Okay? Now, the reality is, is the public trust to serve the Creator will divide the house that Satan built. End of story. We're, we live in a society that craves money. The only solution is money. We all our politicians are elected on the pretense that they will take make those tough economic decisions, and that's all there is to it. And they get elected. And if you don't say that, uh, these politicians won't get elected. And the reality to making those tough economic decisions means screwing the people in return for uh, security and the economy not collapsing, which it eventually has to do anyways, because the Ponzi scheme simply can't continue. Period. It's exhausted itself. 
the public trust has been lost. As I've said to many officers, what do you do to fix the public trust once it's broken? And they go, we don't know. Well, I ask them, do they, do they know it's broken? And they go, yes, we know it's broken. Well, what do you do? And the reality is, my quote is, Thomas Jefferson, Washington, Lincoln, all of the, you know, Rousseau, uh, Voltaire, uh, you name the philosopher, they didn't know either. Okay? They suggested going back to the beginning and starting over. Well, that's exactly what serving the Creator would do. It's the original trust of the Garden of Eden. It actually is. It go, it's not going back to 1776. It's not going back to 1302 when serving the sovereign's interest was done. It's going all the way back to the new creation. Okay? And on that, I'll quote Romans 13. When, it doesn't say if, when all debt in the world is forgotten, the only remaining debt will be the eternal debt of love for our neighbor. Okay? Serving the Creator is, uh, will change everything. Corporations, as to um, 1 Corinthians 15, Serving the creation, old soldiers going into a room and, and changing the oath from serving the sovereign's interest to serving the creator uh, would mean that these dead things called corporations would start serving humanity instead of sucking it dry. Automatically, it would happen. Okay? Seriously. Okay? All of their debt that they created all to themselves would be forgotten as well. Isn't that cool? Okay? Being driven to pay off a debt and take the, the, the weight off the shoulders of the world, of everyone in the world by saying all debt in the world is redeemed and please don't fall back into the, pro the debt, the sewer of going back into debt. You're given an opportunity. Okay? Because reality is, is as soon as they start serving the sovereign's interest, go from serving the sovereign's interest to serving the creator, they have to accept that this Ponzi scheme is totally forbidden by the creator. And, and the story, chapter and verse, they have to do it. The weight of the message would create what's called the Grand Awakening, okay, period. The Grand Awakening is, there are so many terms for it, it's pathetic, okay, there really are, it's Nirvana, it's the uh, the oneness, uh, the collective consciousness, the Grand Awakening to, uh, from what's called the duality. Everyone in the world agrees that we're stuck in this evil mindset called the duality. Okay, and it's binary, right and wrong, left and right, good and evil, uh, women and men, uh, and they all made to conflict against each other. Okay, it's uh, what a great philosopher called Herman Do You Weird uh, described as it's a contract, and he said it came from Genesis 3. It's a contract where me and my buddy God are going to dominate the creation, and the creation, and God will provide. Okay? It's well accepted that God upholds his creation. And if he didn't do it, the world would collapse on itself, all by itself. Now, in the Garden of Eden, it's said there that we were there to serve the creator. It really does say that. Okay? Okay, we, we were there to serve the Creator and the public trust. That's what I'm saying. The public trust going to serving the, you know, serving the Creator by the oaths goes all the way back to Genesis 1 because in paradise on earth, we serve the Creator. Isn't that cool? 
And that's how fundamentally big it is. Okay, right now they're serving the creation. And for that, go go read some of my writings, okay? The creation is uh, the epitome of evil, okay? Serving the creation, okay? Now let's go back to this idea of the duality, okay? This guy called Herman Duyward, he said that the new covenant, or the way people thought in paradise on earth was they were upholding his creation. Okay? Now, upholding his creation is the augmentation of Abraham's trust. Period. Abraham served the creator. Okay? And for this, he was called righteous. Uh, the Talmudists serve uh, Talmudists and the bar and the Western Hemisphere all follow what the Ninevites philosophy, which was to serve the sovereign's interest. Serving the sovereign's interest goes all the way back to Samaria. Okay, and that's by definition dark and evil forces. Now, as soon as we start serving the creator, uh, the public, the, all debt will have to be forgotten. Uh, the deal will have to be exactly what it's outlined in the Lord's Prayer. We're going to have to forgive those who have indebted us, and we will have to forgive all debts of others. You know, and Or trespasses. The Catholic interpretation is trespasses. The Anglican interpretation is debtors. And it's both the same thing. Okay? The only way the rich will agree to changing the oath without a bloodbath is if we offer um, amnesty, a truth and reconciliation. It's the only thing that can work. And basically, we'll slip into paradise on earth. Uh, the great joy of all debt in the world forgotten, all slaves free, and a return to uh, back to the beginning will cause exactly that, a new creation. And the new creation is created by the joy of all debt in the world being forgotten. And it'll be replaced by the awakening, which is the trilogy. And that's a concept, again, exploited by, you know, explained heavily by a guy called Herman Dewey Weird. 70 years ago, 60 years, 70 years ago. Okay? Now, he said that it was a contract in Paradise on Earth. It was a contract between you, the creator, and the creation itself. Okay? And we share in the burden of upholding God's creation, and in this way we become sons and inherit the earth. And that's a Romans 8 promise. And it comes from revealing a, a fundamental truth that is apocalyptic. And it triggers the new covenant. And the new covenant is nothing short of paradise on earth returning uh, life to the dead uh, happening, the grand resurrection, and the opening of the realities. And the world is only dabbling in the rotten realities now. Okay? Uh, fallen civilizations is what they're delving with. Okay? The reality is, is uh, I agree full-heartedly with uh, the Hebrew interpretation of Genesis 1-1, which is in a beginning, not the beginning. In the Jewish Bible, it's in, in a beginning. Okay, and in Hebrews it says that the secret will reveal the very no no sorry that's first first Corinthians one two uh, thing it says there that the new covenant will reveal the very reason why God created us before time began and in the beginning there was the word okay and I'm saying 
The word was the creation. And it created substance in the Om of it all. The vibrational frequency. Okay. We, upon our ascension to uh, the awakening, are going to be open to the realities. And there's nothing better in the world. Okay. Uh, all past, all past suffering will seem insignificant compared to the glory that's revealed when the new covenant takes over your heart. And that happens from a collective sigh of relief from all death in the world being forgotten. It's that simple. And the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay to the glorious freedom of all God's children. So says Romans 8. How is the liberation created? Well, it's liberated from the bondage of decay. Well, by the sons of the living God upholding God's creation. Because God upholds his creation in heaven. And it's our duty to uphold his creation here on earth. And it starts by the bar serving the creator which is actually the apocalypse and in the apocalypse lies the grand awakening and literally the return of jesus christ uh christ consciousness it's you know yes there will be a living flesh called jesus christ who walks the face of the earth that is undisputable okay and there will be seven thousand who are real close to his power. Okay, real close to his power. And they open the realities. Jesus Christ is in all these realities. But there are 7,000 who will open the realities here on earth, and it will be the same order in heaven. Okay? God upholds his creation in heaven, and it's mankind's destiny to uphold his creation on earth and in this way, we share in the burden and share in the glory. There will be those who are 30 times better, who are the children of God, those who are of God. Okay, everyone who is of God, guaranteed to be 30 times better. Those who are with God will be 60 times better. And the clue there, you know, everybody, if the Bible says over and over again that the new covenant, or the 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 apocalypse of the message will show you a way of how to be with God. Okay? And that falls back, and it again calls back to a First uh, Corinthians, thir not First uh, Corinthians, I'm sorry. It falls into a passage that says that the new covenant will augment Abraham's trust. Well, Abraham's trust is to serve the Creator. And the augmentation, and you are of God if you're serving the Creator. No problem at all. Okay? You're in. Okay? Now, those who uphold God's creation, it's actually the augmentation of serving the Creator. Those who uphold God's creation in their heart will either be 30 times better or 60 times better. Or a hundred times better. We all shine on like the moon, the stars, and the sun. So says Isaiah. So says Romans. So said John Lennon. What can I say? I think he was a prophet. Okay? Now, the reality is, is, um, the bar is going to have to make a choice real soon. Uh, they can lead the crusade and to the return of paradise on earth, or they can just sit on their hands and exactly as Isaiah 59, they will refuse to fear the voice from the West. And it's a call being made to the East. It, uh, and if they, nobody lifts a finger to help, then Judgment Day happens anyways. And hopefully, before uh, these demonic perverts that are ruling the world trigger uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, 
which is fraudulent miracles and wondrous signs and the destruction of this world through an atomic holocaust. And uh, the choices have to be made. If they care not to seize on to uh, a good definition of apocalypse, which is actually a line in 1 Corinthians 13, or yeah, 1 Corinthians 4.20, sorry, 1 Corinthians 4.20. Which says, you know, the new covenant is all about power. It's not about talk. No, no, it's about power. And do you really want to meet the Lord with the rod of discipline, a.k.a. the definition of apocalypse of revelations? Or shall I come in love and in the gentle spirit? Now, I personally think returning in love and with the gentle spirit is being offered by one people's public trust. And in this way, the men of the Nineveh. And Nineveh is where serving the, serving the sovereign's interest came from. Yes, it was adopted in 1302 as the UCC slogan and motto and its founding, its rubric, but it came from Nineveh. Okay, and the men of the Nineveh will rise in indignation. And now there's someone greater than Jonah here. And that's my Lord Jesus Christ in living flesh. And he brings life to the dead. And we enter the realities. Okay, life to the dead. These dead are already in other realities. We're just going to open and connect to it. Uh, it's paradise on earth. Uh, it's a guarantee of mankind. It's our salvation being offered. And exactly as prophecy is being offered to the bar first. Uh, we, those who are, oath hold, are not oath holders, or not among those who ought to, which is an Ecclesiastes warning by Solomon, uh, are being tested. And uh, if they don't believe in the great abyss, then they won't believe it when they're tossed into it. Uh, the great calling is happening. okay, And that's the return. And Jesus Christ says absolutely everyone's saved. Well, that happens by an offer that those in authority might accept. And as to Luke 11, any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. Any house divided against itself will fail. It has to fail. The whole system has to fail in order for us to inherit the earth as sons. Uh, we live in interesting times, and it's not my choice what authority does. I am simply saying that the voice from the West is being made by uh, someone who's doing his best not to disturb a read. And uh, in this way, we inherit the earth as sons. They've got to get up off their ass. Not me. Not all these guys who are ramming them to change their evil ways. Okay? Everyone out there who's, like, being subjected and beaten and resisting uh, what's happening will be in paradise on earth. That's all there is to it. The sins of the Father are being held against the third and fourth generation, as to the second commandment. And he promises that all those who hate God will be destroyed. So says the second commandment. And, you know, that's being fulfilled. Well orchestrated by a bunch of Masonic Masons who dragged in 10% of the world. And, uh, what can I say? It's not my choice. Uh, I take comfort in the fact that the Grand Awakening happens to at least 90% of the world. And those who didn't want that, didn't want it. They actually choose to stay in the rut called uh, an evil mindset. The Grand Awakening is, from the duality, is the trilogy. And the trilogy is um, being offered. 
with a simple thought that actually is a notion that is hidden in everyone's heart who serves God. Everyone who serves God in his heart upholds God's creation and is offended when he sees its destruction. Okay? Take that subconscious th thought, put it as the reason why you do things. And it's not your mind wins, your heart wins. It, it it's, gives you function, reason, and purpose. And when the angels descend, they'll, you'll, it'll stand out as self obvious, self evident, and you'll be saved in the blink of an eye. Or as 1 Corinthians says, in the twinkle of an eye. And uh, either way, you know, good first fruit, bad first fruit, all those who serve God will be saved. All those who serve the sovereign's interest and don't repent will be destroyed. End of story. Chapter and verse. It's called uh, The Great Divide. Uh, I wait in patient anticipation for good first fruit. And uh, I regrettably can't see it happening. But in that day, it's supposed to be a giant surprise. And uh, it happens one way or the other. Thank you very much.